All right, new numbers from political strategist and pollster Frank Luntz suggest Americans don't think it's that, that, that the system is broken as much as they think it is the candidates. When asked what the greater problem is, 72% said the politicians and people running for office who are more of an issue, 28% named the current election system itself. But Frank uh, joins us now. Frank, as always, thank you for being here. Uh, and yet the people are the ones who keep electing these politicians. Well, the problem is that they seem to be one thing as they're running for office. Then they get elected and they become part of the system. And that's one of the frustrations that the public has. Get things done. They are angry at the partisanship. They're angry at the rancor between the left and the right. And they're just angry at conditions in the country. And they don't think that the elected officials, and by the way, Britain's going through the same thing. Israel's going mm. through the same thing. We've seen the same thing in Germany and France. Frankly, it's a challenge to democracies everywhere. Thanks to social media, yeah. thanks to the pressures of day-to-day -day service. Governments are not performing in the way that the public wants. And I'm genuinely afraid in this country that we're about two and a half weeks away from a group of candidates simply not accepting the results. And this is my warning to you all and to the viewers watching at home. We could have a situation of 2020 all over again and all over the country if governors, senators, secretaries of state choose not to accept their loss and continue to fight back. And it's not just Republicans. Um, we're in trouble here. And your previous segment shows that we've been through this before. I don't want us to get to a civil war. I want, us to, I want our democracy to survive and thrive. And one more point. I'm teaching a group of students at Bradley College. They're British students, mm -hmm. and they look at their government having just fallen. They look at our government and the anger that they, that they see from the elected officials. And even they, the future of their country, the future of all of us, even the Bradley students think, what has gone wrong? Well, I mean, wow. Frank, we just played a clip from one of Elise's focus groups, and every Trump voter she talked to believes that Biden's not the rightful president, believes the lies that they've been told repeatedly, think January 6th is much ado about nothing. You have candidates that are running for governor uh, who are election deniers. You have people who, they who are going to be leaders in the House, say they won't accept the results, uh, leaders in the House. I mean, uh, yes, I understand there have been Democrats here and there uh, through the years, uh, a, a small handful uh, that have, have uh, challenged election results. But here, in 2022, uh, this is coming from the Republican Party, and it seems to be a clear and present danger to American democracy, does it not? Uh, yes, it does. And, but I'm doing everything I can to keep it nonpartisan. I'm doing everything but, I can. But, but how, how can you when, when it's all coming from the Republican side right now? Because the same thing happened in 2016 when Democrats said the same thing about Donald Trump. It happened in 2004. I was on your network, I believe, when uh, they called it for George Bush and people thought that John Kerry had won. We've gone back and forth. And I just have to say, really, stop. Because this time, in 2022, having been through the, I got to watch my language, going through what happened in 2020, if we do this again, one more time, we are at the precipice of losing the faith and right. trust uh, of uh, a majority of Americans. Frank, I, 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 you know what? I, 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 every day, I, I try to find positive things to say about Republicans who are being responsible, because I want to encourage responsible Republicans uh, bit by bit, day by day, step by step, win the internal battle against election deniers. But I cannot sit here and, and, and let viewers think that there is any moral equivalency between what happened in 2020 no. uh, when, when Donald Trump undermined American democracy and repeatedly undermined confidence in the system. And what happened in 2016 when Hillary Clinton went out the next day and conceded or what happened in 2004. And yeah, there were some wing nuts out there saying that Ohio was stolen, but John Kerry went out and conceded the election. I mean, there's just, again, I don't want it to be a battle about that right now. And I, I, I understand that you're trying to make this a bipartisan appeal. Sadly, in 2022 and in 2020, 
there's no um, there's no moral equivalency between what we're going through now and what we've gone through in the past. Is there? Uh, I, Joe, those are legitimate points. And I think that what the ex-president has done has been so destructive to democracy. And I see what the damage is. I see it in my focus groups. We have the same thing, where people can't talk to each other. They don't want to hear each other. They don't want to listen. And most importantly, they don't want to learn. And our children are watching. We all yes, are sitting are. on this table. We're adults. I'm afraid of the message that's being sent to the next generation, to those Radley students out there who are watching. Uh, I'm not going to disagree with you. But what I am going to say is, if we want to repair that breach, if we want to find a better union, as Abraham Lincoln did, and I'll go back to that segment, he did not want to damn the South that had pulled out. He did not want to punish them. Right. He, did not want recon he did not want reconstruction. He wanted reconciliation. I'm trying to follow yeah. Abraham Lincoln's lead right now. Right. And, and you know, so, uh, Michael Steele, I've always made the point as people like you and me, it may not seem this way to a lot of Republicans, but we're trying to find a way back, like Ann Applebaum said after January the 6th, let's try to find common ground to pull some people away right. from the nihilism of Trumpism. And I will say, it, it, it does make great sense. When, when Frank's talking about following Abraham Lincoln's lead and people may be mocking, I always remember whenever I'm ready to, to, to just lose it, I always remember what Lincoln said in his second inaugural address uh, after 700,000 Americans had died because the South was willing to kill 700,000 people and, and sacrifice 700,000 people in the North and the South to save slavery. I remember even after all of that, Lincoln said with malice, Toward none. And right. that's how I try to walk every day through life, even though I fail sometimes when, when we talk about these issues with malice toward none. And yet we still have to have a clear eyed view of this malevolent force that threatens our great republic, that threatens the great American experiment, don't we? Yeah, we do. And, and so. It, 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 the the problem, and, and it goes back to the focus group conversation that we had with Elise, it goes to the historic uh, composition, sort of framing that we had with John and, and, and Doris, about how people respond to that. Malice towards none. I would say those words are lost on a lot of folks today. And so my, my question to Frank, who is... Uh, has been in this space, um, and, and certainly having started out in 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 the in the grassroots of the Republican Party and knowing how they feel, they talk, they understand, and and express these things. What do you suggest? What do you think in terms of, to Joe's point, using the language, understanding the terms? How do we frame the argument, the case for democracy? with people who believe, as the polling just showed, you know, 72% think that, you know, the, the, the problem with elections are the politicians um, and not the system. And yet, as Joe noted coming into this segment, they vote for the <laughs> those very same politicians. And those politicians are the ones that are driving this narrative, this negative narrative. Mm -hmm.